Hey, what's up? It's your boy David Lucas. I'm out here fishing with Duncan Hi. Trussell. Uh, we are here in Austin, Texas. While I was waiting for you, Duncan, I actually hit on about a pound and a half bass. Really? Yeah. When's the last time you been fishing, man? The last time I went fishing was, let me think about that. Oh yeah, I went fishing with my kid. How long ago? That was probably a year and a half ago. Nice. I've been fishing since I was a kid, man. You had, when was when did when was the first time you went fishing? Do you remember? True. Probably as soon as I could walk. Two, three. I grew up in a I grew up in a fishing house. Man, my granddaddy, he had a, a pontoon boat. My uncle had a bass boat. We were always on the every. That was that's what I look forward to on Saturdays, man. Going fishing. Try to aim towards those bubbles in the middle. Okay, I'll try to aim towards the bubbles, David. I'll let you throw first. <laughs> You know, I don't know what's gonna you know, happen. You know, you're gonna get a hook in you. Nah. You might get a hook in you. Nah, it's been nah. a long time. I it's windy. Nah, you got it. Hold it down and throw. Yep. Not bad. All Not right. bad. Really in some of the slack. There we go. Yeah, really in some of the slack. So, do you eat these fish? Hell no. Not out of here, man. So that's true, that some, the fish get polluted by their water. Because when I was in L.A., you'd see people in the L.A. River walking by with fish they, yeah, massive it, fish they caught. Let it sit. Yeah, in the L.A. River, dog, I definitely wouldn't eat anything out of there. They're idiots. It's nuts, dude. Big fish, though. Big, beautiful fish. Probably but carp. They used, there was a lot of carp catching uh, on the L.A. River. I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat anything out of the L.A. Maybe, uh, what's that lake that I used to fish up north, north of like Los Angeles County? Castaic. That's about the only lake I would fish at. I mean, eat fish out of, man. I wouldn't, especially like catfish, bro, bottom feeders. But it's all like, it's all, you know, like an ecosystem. So it's like the, the, the big fish, the bass, the striper, the crappies, they eat the minnows. The minnows probably eat contaminated algae. Yeah. So it's like, you get a byproduct of all that pollution. No, somebody told me like they had these friends who were really into sushi. Uh -huh. Ate it every night. And they got really sick. They got mercury poisoning really bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you eat too much, like what is it? I think salmon has high mercury content. But that's, to me, it's like you, you, you don't know what those fucking fish are eating. Nah, you really don't. Because we're talking like, we don't know what's under the ocean. No, bro. Uh, I think ocean, the ocean is where aliens are at. Exactly. I really think that. Exactly. It, it, because uh, fighter pilots and, and those people on those big Navy boats always see spaceships and stuff out there. They go into the water. Yep, yep, yep. Which is exactly where you'd want to hide. If you wanted to hide on a planet yeah, full and of non-aquatic sentient creatures, go into the ocean where they can't fucking go. Right. Build your base. There's probably caves down there. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's like you think it's just mercury that's getting you sick from the fish, but <laughs> it's probably so something bad. else. Some weird alien <laughs> emission. You ever had an experience with an alien? <sighs> no, I haven't had like any of the classic. You know, right. I've had the thing where you're high and you see a, a right, light. Right, and you're you're like, right. It's a UFO. But I've never. I, I, have you? Have you noticed? No, I never had no alien experience. Uh, definitely residual energy, but never an alien. What do you mean residual energy? Like ghosts and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Zach Baggins, I went to his hunting museum and, and... Oh, yeah, I want to go there. Bro, in Vegas, it gave me the chills, dude. See, this, to me, this is like one of the funny things about humans. Uh-huh. We, there's things we won't go around. Like if I told you, oh, man, check out this plutonium I've got. Right, right. You'd be like, get that shit away from me. It's <laughs> radioactive. Let me see. Let me try to get y'all further. But Zach Baggins is like, oh, I'll just put some of the most fucked up shit <laughs> in one of the most fucked up cities on earth and people will pay. You don't know what's jumping into you there. What's the dude? What's, yeah, I made sure I didn't take anything residual home. What's the dude's name? Uh, Patrick Swayze. I didn't know Patrick Swayze was into like witchcraft or some shit I like that. I didn't know that either. Bro, that is crazy. He has Patrick Swayze's tooth. What? And like some sorcery shit, bro. It was. It was. What kinda, do you mean some sorcery shit? Like I guess when Patrick Swayze was dying <laughs> from you. cancer, yeah. I guess when I guess when he was dying from okay, cancer. Okay, I'm sorry. I this is the first I heard that Patrick Swayze died. Is it from from, from Roadhouse? From Roadhouse. Fuck. You didn't know. I was about to. You always made me question. I like that. Patrick Swayze died of some type of cancer. That sucks. 
You didn't know he died? No, man. <laughs> I guess now I now that I think about it, really, yeah. Really, okay. really, really a little bit of your slap. Yeah, now I remember now because right, that's good. You know what I heard about him? He, okay, so Patrick Swayze was a chain smoker. Mm -hmm. Like he was hopelessly addicted to cigarettes. Mm -hmm. It was fucking up production on shows oh, wow. and stuff. He had to smoke that much, like in between Damn. takes. Go take a smoke break. So yeah, yeah. Now I remember. Yeah, Patrick Swayze. That was sad. It was super sad. But I guess when he was dying, he practiced some type of black magic or whatever. And he has like a tooth and some other stuff. And he, he has the chair that, uh, what's the Conrad dude sat in when he said administer Michael Jackson his, uh, what? his uh, poison. Yeah, he has the, you remember the suicide van? Yeah, I saw that he got the Dr. suicide Kevorkian, van. Dr. Kevorkian, whatever his name is. You know is. what's interesting about that is that suicide van I read, it went on some auction site for like 6,000 bucks. It was like, that's not a lot. It was not a. It was not an expensive van, and it's a nice van. He also has the Camaro, uh, the cult leader from Waco drove. David Koresh had a Camaro. Yeah, sick one, bro, he from the '60s. Like he black. A, he looks like he has a yeah. Camaro. His haircut. He has James Dean's uh, Porsche <laughs> Axle, the one he died in. Man, that is so dark. He got. He got some. All right, right there. And then he got this basement dog. I refuse to go in the basement. Uh, that's where a lot of people say they get scratched. And I'm like, I'm not trying to get scratched by. What? Why? What is? <laughs> what is that? Yeah. It's like, yeah, I, I've got a hey, I've got a basement full of feral cats. <coughs> and then he got this thing. I think it's called like the Didek box. It's like a Jewish wine box or some shit that's supposed to be cursed and somebody sealed it up or whatnot. Like, like these are things a long time ago people would burn. Right. Like you incinerate it, you, get, right. you throw holy water on it. But Post Malone like touched it or some shit. Yeah. And the dude, uh, his plane almost crashed. He had a car accident and somebody broke in his house. I'm like, I didn't even want to go in that room. I'm like, I'm not going in that room. It's, why, but why, like why? Why do, why do we <laughs> want that? It's cause, you know what it is? It's fear of death. It's like people are so afraid to die that they would rather get cursed by a ghost and at least know there's something right, right. that happens after you die. You think that's what it is? I do. I think yeah. that's what it's rooted. If we if we knew for sure that right. there was spirits, life right. after death, then there you wouldn't be able to open a, a ghost museum in Vegas because right. it would be like opening up like a poison museum, like mm -hmm. touch the cyanide or whatever. Right, but, right. I want to go to it though, to be honest. No, <laughs> like, it's, it's, it looks cool, it, the, bro. It's some. Um, th there's a doll there. You can't look her into her eyes. Uh, she's killed people by looking at them. And yes, yeah, it's, it's some. There's a mirror, and then there's like a head, and you got to tell the the ghost hi and bye so no. that he don't follow you home. No, you know I. Uh, I can tell when I I can tell when someone's died in that house, like when it's been a bad death. Yeah, you, you can, can feel that. You can feel, feel that. It. Yeah. We were, we were... They used to practice, like, rituals in that house. Which house? The house that he actually bought to turn into the haunted museum. Yeah, that's the worst, man. You don't want to live in a haunted house. It's no. really bad, because you can't, like... So if, if, if there was a $4 million house for sale... No. You wouldn't buy it, but they sold it for, like, 150000 air, Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> An investment property, maybe. I met the people who live in the Wonderland house up in the Hollywood Hills. What they are said, they like? They were cool. They were young. They didn't uh, ever, you got a hit? No. They didn't uh, ever say they felt any residual energy, any bad energy, anything. But also those people weren't like killed in a, you know, a satanic way or anything. It was just they right. stole drugs. Just a regular murder from stealing. No, I lived in a haunted house once. It was horrible. Yeah? It was the worst, man. Like, you know, it's like your friends who are psychic or whatever will come over and then they'll be like, you know your house is haunted, right? I remember when we first moved in. Really in a little bit. When we first moved in, we were renting it. And, um, All right, right there. When we first moved in, uh -huh. the neighbor says to us, you know what happened in there, right? <laughs> like, and would not say what it was. <laughs> but the house was haunted, horrible dreams. Like when we, the first night we were there, the a door just slammed shut like ang you know ang well, in LA that was in LA a lot of weird shit happened in LA bro oh my god I, I, I remember I was moving to this happened. apartment on Wilshire Beverly Hills adjacent one quite Beverly Hills and I was like I asked the, I, I was like why is this apartment so cheap 
And he was like, oh, you know, a guy got murdered in here. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, you think I want to stay here? Yeah, what the fuck? He was like, we, we cleaned it up, though. I'm like, Bro. Isn't there a law that you have to disclose? I think it's only seven years in California. Seven years. Within the last seven years. But yeah. that does show, like, some, like, legal knowledge right, right, that there right. is the houses where people died have fucked up energy in them. Yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, why would you have to say it? Yeah, true. Bro, going back to aliens, don't you think it's kind of funny that uh, since uh, the Me Too movement has happened, nobody has said anything about getting probed by aliens? <laughs> nobody gets probed by aliens. That's connected to Me Too? It has to be. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why? I don't know, but How nobody... How do you get canceled for getting probed? <laughs> no, I'm saying they just don't say it anymore. Ever since the Me Too movement... You don't hear anybody say, oh, I got probed by an alien. I, nobody's been abducted, abducted by aliens in a while. Well, now. they finished. I think whatever that project was where they were studying human assholes, it ended, which is why. It's like, how many assholes do you need to probe? Right. Like, at some point, you're not doing science anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you're having too much fun. Yeah. <laughs> right. There was, yeah. Probably, yeah, there was probably a few aliens who were like, I think we still need to probe. Bro, me and me and Rogan were talking about uh, we were talking about aliens and you know how their spacecraft, like people who have saw their spacecraft and everything, really a little bit more. Just about four clicks. Uh, people who have seen their spacecraft and everything, probably yeah. right there. And um, how fast it moves and how it takes turns and stuff. That aliens probably look close to octopus. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. But, yeah, Because that. of just what would that G-force and everything do to your body? Well, I mean, the assumption is that they haven't figured out a way to... I've heard that, that, that one possibility is it's somehow generating its own gravitational field. So it's not getting G-forces. There aren't G-forces inside. Oh. Oh, look at that. Well, yeah, you can really, man. You're my guest. Thank you. That's very polite of you. Oh, he jumped. We had a jumper. Get him dunk. Let's go, baby. So is there an art to reeling fish in? Like, what am I doing wrong here? No, you're not doing anything wrong. He's not a big one, so you can't really go wrong. But if he was big, I right, not bring him this way. Little bass. All right, right there, right there. All right, let's see. Yeah. A little bass. <laughs> but if this was a bigger bass, you definitely, I would have loosened your, uh, I would loosen your drag up and let him, you know, fight a little bit because it's only like 10 pound test. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Should we throw him back yeah, in? Yeah, throw him back in. God right? bless you. Hare Krishna. But yeah, if it was a bigger bass, we would have definitely, I'll put your worm back on. Thank you. I would have definitely uh, loosened your drag up so that he could fight a little bit. Because I mean, people have caught like, you know, 50, 60 pound catfish on 12 pound test line. That's crazy. And, and uh, the trick is just, you know, uh, making sure you tire him out. Catfish get tired real quick. They're big boys. They get tired real quick. So you have, you know, 10, 15 minute fight. And then after that, you can bring that joker in. You wear him out. Yeah, wear him out, man. Him out. Yeah, you know, I think probably within the next 10 years or so, we'll, we will really in a little bit. definitely, like, for sure know that aliens are something is, like... There's definitely a, a different life form, dog. Like, it's... I think humans are a little selfish if they say it's not. All, but those things, the other, like, humans apply their own humanness to everything, right? Mm -hmm. Like you look at- Even God, they personify God. You personify God, you personify the aliens. Mm -hmm. You so, so our idea of what an alien spaceship looks like is based on like an airplane. But right, right. Like a disc, mm -hmm. right? But why, why would it look like that? It's an alien. Exactly. It might have a completely different way to- Exactly, study man. Study planets. Exactly, man. I, I don't, I, in my own mind, don't think aliens are gonna be what I don't think they're gonna be this big, like uh, Mars attack type thing. Because I feel like if aliens want to destroy us, they could have been there that. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the, the whatever they consider like conquering something is probably, that's another human thing. Like we have right, the idea, right. like here's how you conquer, you blow shit up. Mm -hmm. For them, it might just be like, here's how you take over planets. 
you give them the technology to create hypnotic rectangles that trigger their dopamine receptors that they carry around in their pockets until they become docile and completely addicted to these phones. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Then you use the phones to like simulate what's happening in the world. Right. Make them believe that the phones are telling them the truth. Get them nice and slow and numb and and, 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 and atrophied. So you say aliens are from China. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Who, what is it called? Who way? No, I, I don't know. I, I think that like probably, and if they're benevolent, if they're not interested in like sedating us and like milking us for right. some shit we don't even know we produce, mm -hmm. then probably the most benevolent thing you can do to a planet is let them figure their own shit out before right. you show up. Right. They probably, you know, mm -hmm. like, they probably tried that. Aliens probably invented TikTok, bro, because I swear it makes our young people stupid. Yeah, man, it's like, <laughs> that's the thing. You People are so concerned with these like big global issues right. that you can look at and see and wars and climate, and but the real stuff, mm -hmm. like with stuff that's really happening, nobody, by the time people freak out about it, it's gonna be too late. Exactly. I was talking to somebody, uh, I, we were driving through Vegas and, you know, some of the spots in Vegas look like a big crater hit. And uh, they were like, man, that would suck when the government or the news tells us, you know, a crater's on the way to Earth. And I said, in all honesty, I don't, if there was a crater, I mean, excuse me, if there was a meteor that was, you know, or asteroid coming to destroy Earth, I don't think the government would even tell us because of the, the frenzy it would cause. No, definitely not. No way. I mean, it'll be total chaos. And also, there's this like funniest the assumption if like people in the government became aware of some impending meteor impact, the assumption is that they would just keep governing. Right, right. Like, they don't care. No, none of those people, they're just going to go grab their kids, hide in their bunkers, get their shit, go to whatever military bunkers they're allowed to go into. Like, they don't. The whole, that's just a job. Right, right. They're power nerds. They Very don't really true, care. Man. Very true. Very true. Yes, yeah, it's, it's so, that, how do you, that, I, I don't, I don't feel politics as much in uh, Texas as I do, as I did in uh, Cali. Do you feel that? No. Yeah. No, you don't feel it here. It's interesting, too. It's so cool. It's such a relief. Like, who wants that? Who wants to be, like, getting fixated on the government is a mm -hmm. really, like, embarrassing hobby. Very, very. Like, yeah. more embarrassing. You know, I used to think wrestling, like, people are really into wrestling. <laughs> like, I used to think that was embarrassing. <laughs> but politics is, like, a hundred times more embarrassing to, like, to, to hitch your wagon yeah. to a group of nerds. Because it's, like, nerds. This is what I've realized. It's nerds. Like, the people running the government any in politics, they're they're really no different than any other right. like super fixated sort of right. snotty like people who run record stores right. and are snobby about that they're like they're they're power nerds and they don't really have the power that they think they have they don't even have yeah they don't they um they definitely they don't have face value like you know a lot of us entertainers we have face value and that's why, you know, before we come like rich or whatever, we're able to hang around all these big, powerful millionaires and stuff. And, and it's because they have a lot. They have most of what everybody tries to achieve in the world outside of face value. So they still have to stand in line at the club or they they can't, you know, come into the green room. So they attach themselves to us for that face value. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like they have all the money, but nobody knows who the hell they are. And they, you know, the other thing they do, and I get it, like most of what any like very powerful government does, like it's really interesting in how smart it is. But one of, one of what they do, and they have to do it more now because of the internet, is they, they in a real subtle way, mm -hmm. start connecting to people who they consider to be influencers. And right, they right. don't realize what, right. the, many of these people don't even know what's happening. Mm -hmm. But they're getting kind of like, because so many bots are on Twitter. So these people don't realize that a lot of their retweets are like, yeah, you said it, man. Or the, <laughs> the thing pointing up this. Right. They don't understand. 
th this is like a, 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 a bot swarm, which is trying to give you, it's right. condition you to, to say certain things that match whatever right. the power structure exactly. wants you yeah. to be saying. They don't come to you and say, listen, you better start saying this shit. That's other countries do that. It, it was like during COVID and you would see all these uh, celebrities, hey, get your COVID shot. Or, or it was almost like anytime you saw a celebrity get, get COVID, they would come out with the same Instagram video and it's almost like they had the same script. Like, hey man, make sure you, you know, you social distancing, wearing your mask, or when the vaccine, make sure you're getting vaccinated, man, because this COVID is no joke. Yeah. No, nothing to play with. It's so, like, how does everybody say the same thing? That's where, to me, where it gets really invasion of the body snatchers. It's mm -hmm. like when you start seeing a, re a, re a sentence that's being repeated right, right. across multiple disconnected timelines. Oh shit, we did it. Oh, we untangled, good. I got it. Yeah, that's really creepy, man. It's really creepy. I mean, but that's not just, like if you ever, okay, like there's things people will say and they think it's them but they never right. came out like, uh, I forgive, but I never forget. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. There's like things where people like, it's like when you're designing a character for a video game. Right. I forgive, but I never forget. I love animals. I like music and the outdoors. Mm -hmm. These are just sort of like, they think that they're unique or something. Like I'm one, I'm, that's me, but right. it's like, how is it that the things you're identifying yourself as are literally, oh, I think I got one. Oh, get him. Got him? Yeah. Look at it. I think I got him. Get him, Dunk. Bring him on in. Oh, another it's bass. Same, it's the same one. <laughs> no, it's not, probably not the How same. How do you know? You ever get that sense? It's the same fish. Because fish do have a little bit of memory. That's, uh. I hope they don't have a lot of memory. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like, can you imagine? Like, if, if you, you fish would never it, sleep all right, bring him over here. I got you. Thanks. Yeah, reel up a little more. There you go. If we had him up. Yeah, yeah. If we had a boat, we'd say boat flipping. You'd say what? Boat flipping, which means just like basically flipping Flip in the boat. Flipping the boat. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's the same fish. Look at him; it's identical. Sorry, man. Yeah, I gotta get one. Oh, this is the worst. Why? Don't you go to Philip's Sushi Restaurant? Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. I recognize my cowardice. I recognize my looking away from the reality of what I consume. It's okay. For all you uh, YouTubers out there, those are the hooks that dissolve. He swallowed it pretty I good. No, they don't dissolve. They do dissolve. This is some shit that like the, 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 the dude who drives the boat tells my kid. <laughs> That's what they told me when I bought them. They dissolve. Yeah, they said they dissolve. So if he gets a, you know, a good, A good what? A good uh, hook down the stroke like that. <laughs> he goes down there and gets a nice relaxing massage from no, one of the other fish. It'll come out. Could you hunt ducks? I I, I, mean, I imagine that I could hunt any anything, but like I'm always gonna feel bad about it. It's it's disgusting. It's like look, if you're gonna like eat meat mm -hmm. and feel bad about it. It goes into this le like level of like weird BDSM or something. You know what I mean? It's, it, you should just commit to the what you're doing, not be all neurotic about it. How long have we been going, Brian? Uh, 25. Okay, we'll do like 15 more. Man, this is really nice. Yeah, it's a different podcast, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's really good. Nobody really fish. While they're podcasting. Different change of scenery. I was thinking it'd be fun to do this kind of podcast, but at a firing range. <laughs> you know how what would, I mean? So how you, would you hear you anything? You can't. That's what, that's, what would be, that's what would be funny. No subtitles. Bad. No subtitles. Just It just keeps getting broken up by the, by the guns. Maybe it wouldn't be. That probably wouldn't be a good podcast. It's all beautiful. The one thing that's annoying is it's like they've got all this freedom except weed is illegal. That's the one place that it's like, man, like how do you, how? But everybody smokes it here. Yeah, but it's still like, what was nice about LA mm -hmm. was that there wasn't mixed in with that, the potential, the possibility that you could go to jail. Right. Right. Once Texas fixes its weed laws. 
I think Beto, that guy who was running for governor, even though he had some other shitty shit, was trying to make weed legal. Yeah, it's I just like if you're gonna change something, just legalize weed. They don't even sell liquor on Sundays. Yeah, I know. That's what it was like where I grew up too. I don't care about that. I quit drinking. Oh, you're from Georgia. Yeah. I keep forgetting that, man. You're not far from where I'm from. Yeah, man. I, yeah. Savannah. You need to have him for a fish fry. Yeah, well, I would oh, love that. When next time you going to Georgia? Man, I don't know. Probably not for a long time. When we take the kids out there sometimes. Savannah's so beautiful. Savannah's beautiful, man. Savannah's beautiful. That whole area is just, just heaven. That's where they filmed Forrest Gump. Did they really? Yeah. That's where they filmed good old Forrest Gump. Talk about fucking haunted. Oh yeah, Savannah's one of the most haunted cities in the yeah. world. Yeah. That whole area. Civil War battles. Yeah, and it was the number one slave port, yeah. I believe. This little SOB ran my bait all the way down there. That's one of the first places I experienced like residual energy. Where? So, Savannah. We went to uh, my aunt, my auntie, my uncle's wife, not my mom's sister. My uncle's wife is real big into like ghost and residual energy and all that shit. So we went on a ghost tour. My uncle, he don't really like it. So she had bought the tickets. I was young. And I told her, I was like, I'll go. And uh, we went, bro, and this house was just, you could feel it. It had like the energy of a funeral home when you walk around. Oh, it's yeah. so awful. It's so, <laughs> I know just the feeling, man. It's like heavy. Yeah, dense. yeah. Yeah, it's almost like somebody's restricting your breathing a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> man. It's like the worst fart of all time, but you can't smell the fart, you know? But you know you're in right, this, right. this soup of of psychic poison. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Man, sure. I, I went into a house once and I said, because I had that feeling, and I was like, oh, your house is haunted, huh? And they were like, yeah. They were like, yeah, uh, uh, the woman who lived here before, she died under her electric blanket. And like nobody, I, you know, nobody knew she died for days. So like they came she in. She was just cooking. Cooking under the electric blanket <laughs> for days in there. And you could feel it, man. You could, yeah. It's not like you smell it, but you could just feel the, the Ugh, the, the disease, the right. sadness. That's intense, man. That's hella intense. That's, were you always like, what, what would you call it? Spiritually inclined? Open? Yeah. Were you always like that since the kid? Yeah. Yeah, were you? I didn't recognize it, but my aunt used to, and that's the one who like ghosts and residual energy and stuff. She used to always say I had uh, 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 energy around me. She and she was like, uh, yeah. she was like, when you were a kid, I knew you were special. She was like, you were just different, you know, like you didn't fall into, you didn't believe anything, just blindly. Yeah. She was like, you were always questioning stuff. You didn't really take the religious bait like that. And she was like, you, you just always had an open minded. And you know, being raised in Georgia, like you were, you, you know how hard that can be. When you, when you question a lot of things. Yeah, man, totally. Yeah, it's not like, like, if you don't live in a place like that, you probably don't know how. Yeah, you don't get it. If, unless you're from like the conservative Bible Belt area of the world, you don't understand. Like if you ask a question about the Bible, that could potentially get you slapped. <laughs> yeah, people are, are like, they well, they feel like you're, you know, inquiry into like stuff that falls outside of Christian dogma is like going to summon demons right, into you. Right. You're gonna get possessed by a demon. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna be in hell forever. <coughs> but also, you know, man, like people who are legitimately clairvoyant, you can do it. And you, mm -hmm. They they've perfected it. Like right. they they it's not they they were just like you, but then they you know worked on it until they yeah. could start like like wait, wait, until they became increasingly sensitive. Right. But I that's don't, not that's not my calling. I wouldn't want that. No. Yeah, that's not my calling. I, like in, Mediums I, and stuff. I don't I, need that shit. I don't need to summon somebody's dead relative. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I, that's that's heavy. That's heavier than being an entertainer. Way heavy. <laughs> Way heavy. Like being an entertainer is heavy. I don't think people understand, man. Like, you know, like the stress and the heaviness of being an entertainer. 
you know, and, and just going to do a show. <laughs> yeah, right. The day, every, the day before a show and you're man. building your energy up. And every show we do, man, you know, especially in the climate that we live in now, that's an opportunity to get canceled. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, or to get some type of scrutiny about you. Yeah, for sure. It's, there's there's more risk now. Yeah, there's way more risk, bro, and probably less money because of social media. <laughs> there's more risk because it used to just be like eating shit. You would try to edge lord, and then you would eat shit mm -hmm. because you, what you were saying wasn't funny, and you were doing the classic confusion of saying something shocking with that also being funny, which right, is right. not not always the case. Right. So you would try some bullshit, then you would bomb, and you would feel awful. But now. You know, you, you, that lesson comes and it's much more harsh. Yeah, I, bro, you know what surprised me as I got to know you? I was surprised that you were ever the talent coordinator at the comedy store. It wasn't supposed to happen. Mm. That was just because I was broke and like the current talent coordinator didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't want to be the talent coordinator. Mm -hmm. What year were you there? It was the late 90s. I don't remember the exact oh, year. Oh, okay. So was it fun being a talent coordinator? No, it was fucking horrible, man. In the nineties, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was. I mean, yeah, sure, it was fun. It's fun to get to like hang out with comedians, but you know, you could ruin someone's life. Like it wasn't just like, and comedians are, as you know, sometimes they're assholes. So yeah. like, maybe you're annoyed with some comedian who's being a dick, mm -hmm. right? Mitzi calls. She's pissed at that comedian too. Right. And you have this dark Lord of the Rings moment right. where if you wanted to, because of your little tiny smidgen of butt hurt, mm -hmm. you could say the wrong thing to her and fuck someone over for, for, for their lives. Yeah. So you had to like, and even if you weren't annoyed with him, you had to like still be so careful in communicating with Mitzi because when, when I got the job, uh, Freddie Soto, okay. who was married to the talent coordinator at the time, Corey, he said, your job is to keep people in the business, not get them out of the business. That's your uh, only job. It doesn't matter, no matter what, do not get any comedian banned, canceled, anything. So that was like, that was truly as the talent coordinator in those days, because I didn't have any control of the lineups. The only job was when a comedian called and said, write this down, I had comedians do this. Write this down. I want you to tell Mitzi I think she's the biggest fucking cunt on the planet and she could suck my dick. And you're like, <laughs> you have to be, and they're serious. They're in a rage. <laughs> so you have to be like, okay, all right, I'm writing it down. Read it back to me. Read it back. Okay, you're going to tell her? Yeah, I'm going to tell her. And then don't tell her, you know, because then they like come down from the right. rage. It, that, was, that was very stressful, man. I didn't, I didn't really like that and then Mitzi was a beautiful, incredible, dark guru. Yeah, I met her when she was already sick. That's when I got to LA. She was already declining when I got to LA. Well, she was incredible, man. I got I feel really lucky that I got to work closely right. with somebody like that. But she she definitely she cultured so much talent, bro. When they had the comedy store in Westwood, yeah, and I man. think they had one in Vegas and La Jolla, you know, state. No, she's like. She's a great, like, she's like Ansel Adams, Andy Warhol. Mm -hmm. She's, she was, but, you know, because the, 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 the art form that she was working with right. is still a, a relatively small compared right. to the others. Even though it's obviously massively famous stand-up comics, it's still not like fine art. It's still right. not like, but she was that same level of, of, of talent, of legend. And you knew it when you were around her. And that's hard to be around people like that all right, the time, man. Right, like right. there's such an intensity to the way they live and yeah. the energy they radiate. It's like, hard to be around that. And you know what's so crazy, man? Me and Rogan were talking about that because he went on vacation during Christmas. And he was like, bro, I came back early. And he was like, I was just, you know, we call them normies, you know, normal people. Like he was like, I was like, it's hard. Like, you know, seven, six nights a week, I hang with people like you, you know, Ari Shafir. Joe Rogan, Tony Hinchcliffe, Shane Gillis. And it's like, you go somewhere and you're on vacation, and you gotta <laughs> hang around all these normal people and you can't have these interesting, you know, borderline racist conversations that we have in the green room that, you know, never lead a green room. And it's like, I, I, don't, I don't like it. And I, I'm sure most, like, it, it's just hard to not be friends with anything except a comedian, man. 
Well, yeah, that, that is part, that's definitely part of, of the sickness, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Is that you, you get so used to the way we're used to communicating, we understand right. this like, that like, you don't have to apply the same. Right. There's, right. there's just like an extra, I mean, it's, it's etiquette, I guess, right? It's like, mm -hmm. there's an extra degree of like, oh, right, you're not a comedian, so at this moment, I can't say literally the probably the most offensive thing you ever heard in your right, life to exactly. you. Because you won't think it's funny. You'll hate me for the rest of my life. You'll think about me sometimes. You'll <laughs> you'll like, you know, so you have to, yeah, there's a real joy in being around right, comedians right. in the sense that there's so much freedom Absolutely, to explore right. whatever yeah. dumb thought just is crossing your mind without worrying that for the rest of your friendship or non-friendship with them, they're gonna hold that against you. Yeah. It's, it's not like your uncle. Yeah. You know, or members of your family, you don't even remember what you said to them when you were like 16, but they still, every time they see you, they're mad at you. For something you said when you were a kid. Yeah. yeah. I, I totally get it, man. Yeah, it's, I, it, it's, it's so hard, man. And, 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 you know, you have a great situation with you and your wife, but like, as far as dating, bro, and it's like, you meet so many girls and, and they might see a clip and they're like, oh, you're offensive. I can't date anyone who talks about. It. I'm like, it's jokes. I, if this, I, and you know, they see yeah. a clip and they're like, I'm like, if this makes you mad, there's no reason for us to continue because I'm way worse. The stuff I don't post is way worse than what I do post. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, you don't need that. Like, you don't need in your own life. Right. To someone that close to you to be like censoring you. Right. That's right. a nightmare. But I feel, you know, I feel no offense to you or me. But I do, I mean, I have compassion for anyone in a relationship with a community. Oh, absolutely, bro. And they, they deserve anything we get them. Like, they deserve cars, the house, the vacations. Uh, <laughs> all of it, man. I've but, dated comedians. Yeah, I know what it's like if you date a comedian. It's, it's, it's brutal. And female comedians are normally way more effed up than we are. Dude, it's just the, the like, it, it's, all this, it's all the same thing. It's like you're... We're generally neurotic. We very impulsive, de impulsive, depressive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that sometimes reclusive. Mm -hmm. Like all these components mixed together. And some girls don't get that. Like sometimes I just want to be alone. It has yeah. nothing to do with anything you did to me. Like when I get no. off the road on Sunday, I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to go to dinner. No. I don't want to watch a movie with you. No. I want to chill. Yeah. With YouTube in the background. <laughs> yeah. And be on my phone. That's it. And but they've been missing you. Mm -hmm. And so they want to see you. <laughs> They're excited to see you. And you walk in and you're like a race or something. You know, and you're and, and trying to like explain that. And then this is the worst part, I think. What's that? Well, you can start doing something that is really not a good look, which I do sometimes, and I'm embarrassed by it. Martyred artist. You know what I mean? Where you're like, you don't understand. Right. I right. need to recharge. Right. And you're hearing yourself saying that and thinking about like, what, what have I been doing? I've been jerking off and watching forensic files. You know what I mean? I'm acting like I'm Van Gogh. You know? So you know what I mean? So yeah, it's like there's that other element where, which is a paradox is that we can get very self-serious. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you for coming out here fishing. You called too. You called too. Okay. Man. Listen, man, again, I appreciate you having me. Yeah. I must say this. I have been on fishing trips with my kid. Mm -hmm. I've seen what you've done, and I feel like I owe you. I Like, I should pay you. Normally, no. you like 100 bucks <laughs> for, like, a, a day of fishing with somebody no. who knows how to fish. I didn't do anything. I didn't help the reason.